Hey, yo, check this out. It's DJ Scratch and Toy the Flip Mode Squad. No, Daniel Miller. She was definitely tight. Danielle, I think that she will make a wonderful spokesperson. And I think she will represent the UK very well. The UK very well. And I can really see her in hip hop videos. I thought I should do a video um, talking about Hollywood or Hollywood because I've had experience in the entertainment industry. I've worked alongside celebrities and, you know, it's a testimony coming from me direct. Hollywood's main goal is to get people to sin, however which way. That's their main objective, getting people to sin. It's not to entertain you. That's not, that's not their number one goal. Their number one goal is to get you to sin. Their second goal is to distract you from reality and potentially waking up and serving the most high so they will try anything to get you to lust to covet to be jealous insecure envious greedy obsessive addicted materialistic gossip because that's what holy weird is all about when you really think about it when you're really honest it's profane it's homoerotic it's do what thou wilt which is alistair crowley's um, motto and he is the founder of the satanist church so this is what they're telling you to do in hella weird so when i was younger i used to go to a theater school and i was out performing you know they had me in makeup at that time because obviously i didn't wear makeup normally but for the show i was in makeup and, and um a model scout for a top high fashion london model agency approached me and gave me a card and told me to you know come down i told my dad who i lived with at the time he was strict and it was his way or no way and Instantly, he just read it off and said, no, you're too young, you need to focus on your education. So I missed my, that opportunity to um, get into the high fashion world. And with high fashion, around 12 years old is the best age to scout future high fashion models. You know, they like to take you from about 12 years old and groom you. There's a lot of mind control in that game as well. So they probably groom you and God knows what else. So it was actually a blessing when I really think about it. But at the time, I wanted to do modelling and, you know, I felt like it was unfair. But... It's a blessing from the most high that I didn't get scouted at that age and groomed and all that stuff. So um, I missed out on that. So fast forward a few years to college. Um, I be ironically became the most popular girl in college. Not by anything that I was specifically trying to do to become that way. It just happened that way. But it wasn't a good thing because, um, you know, people, girls were jealous of me, majority of them. And guys, majority of them wanted to get with me. Um... I used to more or less wear pink. How ironic is it that I'm kind of wearing pink today? Because I hardly ever wear pink now. But anyway, I used to always wear pink. So it's like I have my own little thing going on there. And I was quite vain. I used to, you know, hair had to be not a hair out of place. You know, light amount of makeup, but it just accentuates. You know, as makeup, that's what makeup's designed to do. So anyway, and I used to wear crop tops, you know, that revealed my um, small waist and tight trousers. That revealed my curves. People were talking about me making up rumours. And... I didn't like it because even though I took care of my image and on the surface, on the outside, you know, I looked well put together and I looked attractive and stuff, I was a down to earth person. People didn't want to get to know that, get to know me for that. I was down to earth. Um, I would have spoken to whoever was cool. I'm not clicky. I just, I'm cool with whoever's cool. And, um, but, so I stayed away from the common room because of it. Because I just didn't like the atmosphere. I didn't like the fact that I had to do with all these bitchy girls and stuff. And a lot of the guys were just phony at the college. There was only one guy who was quite decent that I started speaking to. So anyway, with all of this jealousy and then um, the one friend, the one close female friend I did develop, um, she turned on me after one year and told um, one of our friends that she was just using me, she couldn't stand me, blah, blah, blah. I didn't see that coming because I have always had a bit of a gift of discernment, but I guess the most high just wanted me to experience life. So he let me go through uh, that kind of betrayal. So all of that drove me into saying, you know what, I've had enough of um, being judged on my image. Because that's what it boiled down to. I was lonely. I was um, targeted because of how I looked. And um, I said, I'm going to try and get into the modelling game. So I tried high fashion modelling again. But if you know anything about high fashion modelling, they only take on a few black females, females of colour. And by this time, when I was looking at all the agencies, they already had their token four or however many. And that's just the way it goes. I'm just being honest, you know. Out of however many female models, there will only be about three or four. That might have had part of the reason why I was rejected by them all. Also, I wasn't straight up and down. Even though I was still slim, to look at me, you'd think, oh, I'm slim enough, I'm tall enough to do modelling. Because people would always tell me, you should model, you look like a model, do you model? But they want you to be anorexically thin, stick thin. And because I wasn't, 
I developed hips, I developed a booty, um, I wasn't accepted into that um, high fashion modeling game. So I said, you know what, I'm going to try um, eye candy modeling. After I watched Masonic Television, aka MTV, there were some UK girls that were going to pursue uh, eye candy modeling stateside, you know, music video modeling, and hip hop videos and stuff. Um, there was a girl from that show who was holding a workshop. So I decided to go to that workshop. And there was a guy from a popular UK boy band. He was going to be shooting a video for a movie, a UK movie, music video. Um, he was coming down, he was going to pick some girls or whatever to um, take part in that video. When he got there, he kind of said to me on the side, you know, don't worry, don't worry, you're definitely, I'm definitely choosing you. And I kind of just, I was like, whatever kind of thing, because I don't know if he wanted me to kind of go crazy and stuff, but I'm not phony. And I don't, um, one thing about me when it comes to celebrities, I've never, like, boosted their ego. I've never been a groupie. I've never gone crazy over celebrities. They're just regular human beings in my eyes. And I'm not going to worship any man. That's always been me. And I think it kind of knocks them back a bit. It takes them, a lot of them can't handle that. Because they're used to, you know, being adored and stuff. And with me, I'm just so calm and chill around celebs. Um, so anyway, that's how I handled it. I wasn't really too, I wasn't really like, oh my God, I wasn't doing all of that. And he probably was a bit surprised by that. Because when it came to the, to the um, video shoot, I thought, yeah, this is going to be really good for me to break into the eye candy scene. There's no UK eye candy scene. So this is going to be a big thing because it was a professional high budget video. Um, and you know, I was featured in it, like featured role, and um, the guy's well known, so I thought this is going to be really good for me to kind of build a brand because I'm trying to build myself into a brand. But and I was looking forward to the day, thinking it's going to be fun, it's going to be so much fun. It wasn't fun, like, there were a lot of people there, mostly women, mostly females, and there was just a lot of insecurity. I could just feel and see the insecurities, it was very depressive. You wouldn't think it would be so boring and so negative. You know, I had no one to spark a conversation with, no one to have fun with, and I thought. Oh, we had that. This is like a glamorous thing. This is a glamorous job. It should be fun. We should be having fun. But this is my point. Don't think that what you see, the end result looks amazing. But during, I've not, I've yet to experience real genuine happiness, carefree environment when shooting. I've shot a lot of different types of things, and um, people just tend to be insecure, full of themselves, too intense. And it's just like, I wanted to have fun. It was going to be a long day, and I thought I was going to be able to have fun, but I didn't get to have fun. And the boy band guy, he um didn't really come and say anything to me he was he, he seemed to be funny with me on the day and i believe he just expected me to just be all over him like some of the other girls were but like i said to you that's not my style you know what i mean why do i need to do that it's like people think that they're, they're meant to make you feel less of a person to them because they're famous but sorry you're just another human being i i believe he liked me and um he just didn't even make an attempt to try and um even if he stood a chance he didn't make an attempt a real respectable manly attempt to try and you know engage with me to expect me to just be all over him because oh i've been chosen it takes more than that but anyway that was just my first proper experience in that eye candy world unfortunately that video didn't go anywhere it didn't come out and i know that if it came out it would have been a big thing because it was professionally done it wasn't one of those hood videos it was a proper high budget thing and for that time in the uk there was nothing like that so this was like a big thing but that didn't go anywhere but anyway it was an eye-opening experience of course, I was still dealing with jealousy, and um, then my boyfriend, he had a secret porn addiction, and that hurt me. It, to me, it felt like adultery. You know, this world, this godforsaken planet likes to tell you that porn is not a big deal, but I beg to differ, it is a big deal, and it is a type of adultery. So for me, it wasn't good, it wasn't nice, and um, that kind of drove me to kind of loosen my boundaries in the eye candy game, because at first I wasn't willing to be too seductive with it, be too revealing, whatever. But... That kind of drove me to say, you know what, um, this guy is not realising who he's with, like how lucky he is kind of thing. I'm not going to be made to feel inferior, I'm not going to be made to feel unattractive. So, you know, I just was really going hard in the eye candy world, losing my boundaries, even though I knew it was wrong. I had that inner voice from the most high speaking telling me it's wrong. But obviously out of revenge, I was a bit confused during that time. I didn't know the whole truth about the most high and stuff. And so I did quite a few things in the UK. I was like one of the first to do things regarding eye candy modelling in the UK because there wasn't a scene at the time there still really isn't a scene but it was even worse so um, I did like magazines, um, urban magazines, um, calendars, um, competitions and I even won an award for urban model, model of the year you know unfortunately I even ended up shooting topless I ended up shooting implied nude um, I developed a pace I was really trying to get a brand for myself 
it became obsessive. The spirit, uh, unclean spirits of unhealthy obsession and delusion came over me. To where I was just, it was all I could see and I was just going, 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 going. You know, I was neglecting so many other areas of my life and stuff because I was just making this an idol, becoming a success. And I knew that I had what it, take, what it takes because I just knew, you know what I mean? When you know, you know. But I didn't realise that even in the modelling world, you've got to sell out in a certain way to Satan to become very successful, regardless of how attractive you are, regardless of how good you are at your, your craft. If you're not selling out, even in something like I can be modelling, you're not going to go very far. That's why, more time now, people that are um, doing well in the eye candy ga game, they come from a background of being prostitutes, strippers. Um, they've got fake mums, fake boobs. Now, how can you compete with someone who's fake, who's faked their way into being the best or whatever? Um, also, when I met a few other eye candy models in the US, because the US is where eye candy modeling began, successful US eye candy models, I'm not saying it to be bitchy, I'm just being, I've got to give you an honest testimony. A lot of them are not in shape, so if you're a bit overweight, what you're seeing, the end result, is heavily photoshopped. It's like, wow, you realise that they're so heavily photoshopped. And so it, it's a big deception even in that game. Um, yeah, so I was one of the first to go over stateside and work in the USA to do some eye candy work. And um, the first time I went, you know, I ended up shooting with this pervy photographer who tried to proposition me, you know. Um, yeah, he was pervy, he wasn't, I didn't find that professional, I just felt uncomfortable. And then um, he tried to ask me to, you know, stay over at his and stuff. So this is what you deal with. And realistically, what can I say? If you're dipping down and doing something so seductive, you can't expect to be treated with utmost respect, regardless. So I was a bit delusional there, thinking that, you know, expecting to be treated with more respect than that. When it came to my pursuit of this eye candy game, I wasn't supported. I've never been supported by the UK. I've seen other females who aren't necessarily that good as a model or whatever, they haven't necessarily got the look, um, get a lot of support because maybe they've got a lot of friends to begin with and stuff and people just gravitate towards them because I didn't know at the time, but I know now that demons hang out with demons. So if you are a child of the most high, even before you get in your purpose, the enemy can know that there's something about you and the demons in other people, because people do have demons whether they like it or not, it's the truth. Um, the demons in other people just don't take to you, just won't like you, won't support you. And I was dealing with a heavy amount of hate, I was dealing with rejection, even in this game. You know what I mean? Like, you would expect that makeup artists, model scouts would pick the best and not let jealousy, insecurity and hatred get in the way of their judgement and of picking the best. But time and time again, I knew There'd be times that I go to casting, as soon as I step foot in the door and I see the person and I get that discernment that, oh, this person just doesn't like me, doesn't matter if I perform well, it doesn't matter, they're not going to choose me and I wouldn't hear back from anybody. Not even politely just to say, sorry, you're not chosen. So I went through that a lot of times. I've had um, makeup artists who don't like me, who've tried to do my makeup funny and all kind of foolishness. It's just ridiculous. When you have demons, when you're demonically oppressed or possessed, whatever you are, you're going to, you know, people are going to target if you're a child of the most high, if there's something different about you, you can be targeted. Yes, it's partially jealousy, envy, insecurity, but it was also to do with the fact that these people haven't been delivered. They're not seeking the most high, so the demons can use them to react finally towards you. They won't, first time, they won't even realise that they have demons that are causing them to hate you without knowing anything about you, causing them to just reject you. So yeah, I was getting tired. I was getting tired of always having to compete, always having to prove myself. And um, I knew that if I lived in the States and I'd done a lot more in the States, I would have gotten a lot further, a lot quicker. So anyway, I became born again. Um, so obviously because I became born again, I gave up modelling. I knew it was wrong and I gave it up. And I promised the most high that I wasn't going to do eye candy modelling ever again. Now, like Christ was tempted in the wilderness by Satan, Satan tried to tempt me. As soon as I said, I, I promise I'm not going to do eye candy modelling again, about a week later, I got a phone call randomly from some so-called modeling agency that I was allegedly, a member, you know, um, allegedly on their books. They contacted me and asked me to um, do a job. It was a job that would have paid well. And at this time, I was basically living in poverty. It was a job that would have paid well. I could have done with the money. It was a simple job. It was quite a high-profile job. And I was just like, this is so obviously Satan. I knew. Because in all my years of grafting and trying, Never had any company, any agency, or anyone try to contact me 
and offer me paid work, let alone work, you know. A lot of the time it's always freebies because they try and tell you that, oh, you know, it's going to be good for your portfolio. And there are a lot of desperate girls out there who are willing to do a lot of free stuff and sell themselves short because they're more interested in being famous and, and being adored and admired than actually making it a business, a profession. And that's what's another frustrating thing that was happening and that still happens now. It's hard to get what you're, you're owed financially and to get respect because there's so many people willing to do stuff for free just so that they can be next to celebrity or so that they can show off or whatever silly reason they want to do it for but i wasn't like that i wanted to you know make things do things for a professional reason to actually become a way of living you know financially and stuff so you know i rejected that job i said no and um for a long time a good few years i was out of the game and um I was just trying to pursue the most high at the time i didn't have all the information i needed my spiritual eyes would become open so i experienced some supernatural things and um it all got on top of me it became too much and i felt like i was going through it on my own at times and it was just a lot i didn't know the phony church system doesn't tell you how this all can is really going to be and what it's really all about so i was like going through a lot that i wasn't expecting to go through so eventually it was dragging me down i got tired i kept waking up night after night having bad dreams um, I kind of drifted away because I just felt like if it's just going to be like this and nothing else I can't deal with this I was still young and I didn't have all the answers yet so I kind of stopped with the Most High and then I still had that I knew that I'd made a promise to the Most High so I didn't want to go back on my promise about not going back into the eye candy game and oh by the way um, when I stopped the eye candy um, when I promised to no longer do eye candy modelling it was at a time that I was um, in a very high profile competition and I was the favourite to win but unfortunately I had to give that up and I didn't I wasn't happy about that because also I don't like to be un, um I don't like to be unreliable but I gave that up anyway so a few years later after trying to walk the walk with the most high I became a backslider and I didn't want to just go back into eye candy modeling so I thought of what can I do and I thought of um, doing promo work promo modeling um, promoting clubs, promoting events and stuff. I tried to host my own event, it didn't go very well. Um, there was a girl there that came. When I decided to do the promo modelling, I put an ad out for another female to do it with. So funnily enough, that girl from the um, event I'd hosted, you know, replied to the ad. She was, she seemed cool, so we started things off. Um, we got a bit of work and it was quite successful. You know, we were earning a bit of money and um, promoting nightclubs, VIP hostessing, charity functions, um, I even started flyering for a strip club and then I was hired to be a receptionist at that strip club. So it turns out that girl was a fake friend, it was another Judas in my life, um, you know, she kept getting fired from the job that we were doing because of her attitude and I was the only one left on working at the job after she'd been fired and, you know, she just didn't want to know me anymore. But anyway, 